Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Today I've got some exciting stuff, starting with AMD's B550 release date, counterfeit CPUs are on the rise, AMD's Ryzen 4000 versus Intel's new 10th gen CPUs, and a faster RTX 2080 Ti. But first, check out the ultimate revolution in gaming. Footmouse, the first science-based gaming mouse made for feet. I've been using Footmouse for over six months. My APM is over 520. I've completely stopped feeding. Footmouse, get your foot in the game. They made me do it. You've been rickrolled by the real sponsor. Raid Shadow Legends, the free-to-play dark fantasy RPG that's now available on PC. And there's a lot to do, from clan bosses, dungeons, arena, and so much more. And now the daily login reward for new players has been doubled. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special links, and if you're a new player, you'll get 100,000 silver, one energy refill, 50 gems, and one free champion, Executioner. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, AMD's long-awaited B550 chipset is still a little ways off, but we finally have a date. According to an exclusive from Adore TV, the upcoming chipsets were originally set to launch sooner, but they've been delayed until mid-June. Now, in a recent article by WCCF Tech, an unnamed source claims that AMD plans to introduce the new chipset on May 21st, with a release date set for June 16th. Of course, that is an unnamed source, but when different sources are collaborating, it's always a good sign. And for those who don't know, the B550 is set to be a cheaper option to the X570 boards, but still includes support for PCI Express 4.0. Let's just say I'm definitely excited to test them out, but apparently I'll have to wait a bit longer. Next up for today, there seems to be a rise in counterfeit CPUs within China, particularly Intel CPUs. According to the Chinese outlet HKEPC, a victim of the scammers tried sending in a fake processor to Intel for warranty work. In that case, the counterfeit chip had the die completely taken out. In most cases, though, it seems scammers remove the integrated heat spreader, which tells you what the processor is, etc., and then puts it on a much older or simply less valuable CPU. So it looks like you're getting the real deal, but under the hood is something much less. At the end of the day, this is a reminder to always buy from reputable retail outlets. Next up for today, Intel's 10th gen Comet Lake Age CPU reviews are out, and that means we can finally compare Intel's newest processors to AMD's Ryzen 4000 high performance parts. Remember, Age CPUs are going to be what gamers look at. These are your laptops with thicker chassis, discrete GPUs, plus the Age CPUs are clocked higher, so they're much better for workstation laptops, etc. Anyway, let's get right to the comparison. Starting things off, most reviewers only received a laptop with Intel's i7-10875H, so not the i9. But luckily for AMD's side, most reviewers got a Ryzen 9 4900HS, which is effectively a step down 4900H, so I'd say it's more or less a fair comparison. Plus, remember that the 4900HS is a 35 watt part, while the 10875H is 45 watts. Where price points will be between the two processors is tough to say at this point, but keep in mind that the difference between the 4800H and 4900HS is only 100 MHz, so it shouldn't be a massive performance difference. Plus, it's still an 8 core versus an 8 core. Now, with that out of the way, let's talk performance. Simply put, AMD flat out stomps Intel's 10th gen and pure multi core performance. I mean, it crushes it. Averaging out all the multi core benchmarks done by Computer Base, you can see the 35 watt 4900HS actually beats the 10875H set to 62 watts. That's winning at nearly half the power draw. And with the 10875H at 45 watts, the 35 watt 4900HS beats it by 22%. It even beats the 9880H set to 90 watts at times. That's just impressive. With that said, we can see that Intel maintains the lead in single core performance, but it's not by much. Unfortunately, most reviewers couldn't do a head to head in games because the laptops came with different GPUs, but I'd assume both of these will fare quite similarly. Either way, Intel also won in areas where cache is important like Excel or Photoshop, as well as apps that support quick sync. But AMD definitely won overall in multi-core benchmarks. And of course, there is an argument that overclocking Intel's 10980HK like crazy could potentially take the lead and even win in multi-core performance, but we're talking laptops here, so battery life is important. 
And speaking of, when you look at comparative benchmarks, it may seem like Intel wins, but if we look at the actual laptops being compared, you'll see that the Intel laptop is a 94 watt hour battery versus 76 in the AMD build. So ultimately, AMD wins here. Basically, unless you plan to keep your laptop plugged up or you care more about the benchmarks Intel wins at, an AMD laptop will likely be your better bet. Lastly for today, a new GPU was spotted on MSI's website with some different specs. For those who don't know, the original RTX 2080 Ti launched with 14 gigabit per second memory, but the new RTX 2080 Ti Gaming Z Trio comes with 16 gigabits per second. And of course, that may not sound like much, but faster memory can definitely have an impact on performance. Whether this will become a trend from Nvidia like switching from GDDR5 to GDDR6 is yet to be seen, but it definitely could help the 2080 Ti squeeze out just a bit more performance. So while that does it for today, what did you think of the news? Do you see yourself picking up a Ryzen 4000 laptop or are you more keen on Intel's 10th gen single core performance? Let me know down in the comments below. And hopefully you got a laugh out of today's raid ad. It was just a way to make it a bit more fun for everyone. And as always, have a great day.